Hi everyone, my name is Yurigita and welcome back to my channel where we talk about our favorite things, knitting. It's February, it's time to plan and I already have a plan and I thought, well, February is the month of love and it's so easy to love new skeins, new sweater quantities and it's so difficult to love those crab balls, half of a ball, half of a skein and I decided to try and love them this month. So my month February is the month of scrap love. <laughs> now we will go to the table, I will show you my notebook and what I have and I will show the projects that I'm already working on. By the way, I'm wearing quite an old sweater. It, I used Malabrigo yarn, I don't remember the exact name, um, but it's like one ply, one ply yarn. Not very thin. I will, I will stand on the chair so you could better see all the details. I made more, more stitch neckline and then the raglan lines are wide and they also have more stitch running down. Oi. And here is the front is shorter, the back is longer. As you can see it doesn't have much of much of positive ease because I grew up a bit in time. That's not good. But it still looks very nice and I love it. It has a bit of peeling. I don't know if you can see it. But it's... But you can remove very easily. And these are very tiny pills. I don't pay any attention to them. Okay, so let's go to the desk, to the talking hand section, and I will show you what I have. But before we go into my knitting plans, I want you to pay attention to my beautiful layout and handwriting and planning and design and everything. It's not me. I write like this. So if you survived this type of writing, you will definitely enjoy this beautiful one. And I asked my daughter to do it for me. She draws incredibly well. She definitely has talent for art and for drawing. She made this for me and I'm very grateful. Thank you, my sweet Agne. Here are my February plans. But before we start, I just want to say and show you that I finished my project bag and the lining is here. Uh, by the way, I published tutorial a day ago so if you want to make something like this you're welcome lining is compulsory in project bags like this because it holds the needles from sticking out otherwise the the project bag doesn't serve its purpose so this is done I have seven points for this month and the first one and the first one is knit sock size 41 for G. That's my colleague and he wants to give a present to one of his family members and asked me to knit the socks. I could choose any any yarn I wanted. The only requirement was that the socks are thick, so I held two strands together. I used Opal for yellow and white is Lana Grossa Mylan White. First I did color work, but I didn't like how the black floats can be seen through and gives this dirty shade. So I decided to embroider them. Here you can see I marked where each cross should start. It's very easy to embroider. You just start at the bottom and you go up, 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 and then finish off. 
and then again up 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 that goes really fast so I knitted one it has yellow toes and yellow cuff and it has my beautiful heel every time I knit I admire it I decided to call it Aurora heel the second sock is done like this so I have the the cuff the ankle the heel and now I have to work on the foot itself and the embroidery is left I think that's in just enough yarn to finish the the sock I hope to finish it during maybe not today but as soon as possible the next thing is scrap yarn sweater with crumbs inspired by shifty uh, shifty sweater by Andrea Mallory I'm not sure if I spelled her name correctly well I saw her sweater on Instagram I guess and I loved that simple idea how slip stitches can make the pattern the shifty sweater is a very simple sweater it's just the basic slip stitch pattern you slip either one or two and let me show you what kind of scrap yarn I do have I have two balls of Thin, thin merino ul from Sennes Garn. I have another shade. You may see maybe a bit of difference. It's like darkish, it's like not that dark. I knitted bloomers for my colleague's baby. So these are little balls, leftover balls. Then I have the same thin merino wool. I bought it on sale. I also bought this on sale, just one ball, and there was also one ball of this, so I bought these on sale. This is, I have nearly two balls, a ball and a half of this brownish. I don't remember the, um, the type of the yarn, it's not, it's not as soft. It might be super wash, but I'm not sure, and it has different texture, however it will work for my project. And I have this one, no idea where it came from. Well, I'm not sure if I have enough. So 100, 200, 300, 400 grams. So I guess that might work. That might be enough. So, and when I saw her sweater, I decided to knit. I didn't buy the pattern because it's very, very simple. I saw people changing colors in every section, different background color and different mm, this speckle color and it looked nice however i wanted to have it like neat look all over the sweater and i decided to use this off-white it's like grayish white not it doesn't have the yellowish undertone but the gray and i wanted it to go like this but when i knitted this and tried it on <laughs> It looked like this part was a battlefield and someone was fighting with baguettes and now it's covered with crumbs <laughs> and I realized I can't I will not wear it it looks like unclean dinner table full of crumbs I cut off the yarn I didn't then unravel I just left it as an example and then I thought of another idea I completely changed the neckline and I decided to give the dark, the speckly color to be dark, this dark blue, if you, if you want to know the name of it. So the color number is, and I don't have the name of this, but I have the name of this and the berry color is four six four five i chose the white because it's closer to the face and it gives like the clean look like the you know the white colors when i finish the brown one now i did two two times big speckles and there are three times big speckles three times small ones then when i finish this i will put it on I, I lost the stitches. 
that could be a disaster because it's not easy with slip stitches to pick them up. Mm. I'll just grab a bit. Yes, I'll show you how it looks. I also filmed a bit of how I started the neckline and how I made this little beautiful hem. And I will include right after this part, okay? So now you can see how I started. Uh, I don't know what neckline Andrea Malvo uses and how many stitches she casts on and what kind of thickness her yarns are. No idea, I just like the idea and I love trying out myself. I love doing the calculations. I love being inspired by someone, but still making my own thing, interpreting it and having some jazz in the knitting. That's why I practically never buy, wait, sorry. That's why I never, never buy patterns. I do buy sometimes, especially if I want to check myself on a more difficult one. Now I would like to show you how I knit my neckline. As you can see, this is Italian cast on. For this yarn, it's advised on the label to knit using needles number 2.5 or 3. So I knitted ribbing one by one using needles number 2. But the Italian cast on I did on needles number 1. I cast on, on needles number one and then I knitted two rows, not rounds. And here you can see the opening. And then I will sew it up here uh, using number uh, needles number one. And then I started knitting using needles number two. And at this point, I want to make the false hem that I usually do what I do for that. After finishing rubbing one by one, I knitted three rounds in stockinette using the same number two needles. And on the other side, I took needles one size smaller, the same needles number one, or you can take 1.5, and started picking up the stitches. This is how you do that. After finishing the ribbing, the first round that you knitted are in pearl bumps, right? Now you have to pick up every bump. Can you see what stitches I am picking? Like this. As a general rule, if you take smaller needles, you knit three rounds. If you take the same size needles as you were knitting the ribbing, you knit two rounds. I took one size smaller, so most probably I will knit three rounds. And then what you have to do is to knit these two together. But I will show you this after I pick up all the stitches and knit three rounds. Well, I finished three rounds on needles number one 
and I have three rounds on needles number two. This is the end that I attached the other yarn to knit these three rounds. So I'm hiding it there. I just tied a knot and that's how I attached it. And this is the yarn that goes from my main knitting. Now I will take needles number two and very slowly and nicely we'll knit two stitches together, one from one needle and one from the other, making sure the stitches are not twisted. Oi, I'm not used to having my camera between my arms. Three. See, I didn't grab all the strands. Making the stitches tight, don't make them loose. And in this way, you will get this little nice, clean looking hem. that's the wrong side and after this I'll knit one round and then I'll start making the increases oh and after the increases I will count how many stitches I have and I will divide them into front body in the sleeves so that I could make the lifting of the back after each stripe of color. I will show you how. I finished knitting the hem. You can see how nice and neat it looks. That's the wrong side. And now I will knit one, one round, kind of to secure it. And then I will start making increases. Not sure if I will make increases after two stitches or after three stitches. I will think and then we'll let you know. The third one is also scrap sweater with lazy color work and it says big pattern. When I was looking for slip stitch patterns, I came across so many beautiful ones and I found one that I decided to use for my another project because I also have scrap yarn sweater quantity. Let me show you. So this is my scrap yarn. This is Baby Ul uh, from San Nazgar. It's 175 meters. It's merino wool and it's not super wash. And it's light ash rose and its number is 4331. Another yarn that I have a lot of left is Baby Panda by Rauma. It's super wash merino and it's also 175 meters in a, and 50 grams and its number is 47. It's lighter. I used this for sweater with color work at the bottom. I will put a photo and I used this and mix it with mohair and hand dyed yarn uh, to have a gradient look. I will also put a photo. So I have three balls of this, not full, and three, maybe four balls of this light one. And I also have some, and I remember where I bought, I bought it in second hand shop. It's Dalla yarn. That's the company and this is Dalla Baby Wool Superwash Merino 175 meters. It's even lighter than that one. And 
this is like pink ash rose it's the same Dala baby Ul. also 100% merino wool its number is 8507 and this number is 4203 I bought these because there was a huge bag of, of uh, yarn in the shop and the shop owner said that a woman came and brought two bags of yarn because she was knitting for a very famous company in Norway but she had to stop because her wrist hurt a lot and she brought all the leftovers that she had so I picked some I knitted a hat using Drops Charisma because I bought it there I also bought these maybe I bought something else just to try out I knew that I had these similar colors so that's why I chose it and I thought I would do um, stripes with this in between then I thought um, I could use like color work to blend black in into darker one and to blend in a bit into lighter one and I was very happy with this idea I went and bought two of these and now they shifted to another project like basket and I'm using for this crumb crumble sweater <laughs> because when I was looking for slip stitch patterns I found a very nice pattern here is the picture and I thought ash rose it should be nice with green because green and red are contrasting colors so they could always match and I have a Sisu by San Nazgarn this green sweater quantity I bought it on sale it was 50% off and they it would got it means this color won't be produced anymore so I bought I think 10 balls I have to check so I can use two or three of them and I will still have a sweater quantity this color is 7562 I thought it would look so nice and then I had a ball of white so I thought if I mix these four colors it would look really nice I don't have enough and this is not enough this is scrap yarn I don't know what I used it for but I will go and buy a ball of sisu it's also super washed merino yeah the same 170 Five meters and I will start knitting it I will show you the pattern when I start working on it I haven't started yet because I want to finish the socks and then I can start so this will be my I don't know how to call it rose garden because it's ash rose rose garden sweater number four is socks for my colleague size 42 she saw my socks and wanted to get a pair she hasn't decided yet what she wants so I thought we would talk about it later so it's not decided yet if I will knit for her or not so we will see if not I have another friend who asked me more than a month ago to knit several pairs of socks for her friends as gifts so most so then I will if she doesn't want then I will start knitting for for another friend and then I have uh, two patterns this is Aurora heel socks and Bigfoot socks these are the socks for my son and this is the these are socks with a beautiful heel if you were watching me from before you know that I finished one pair of each of them and to be honest I'm a bit afraid to start not because I won't knit it of course I will but will I um, 
be able to explain it clearly, though there's nothing specific, it's just a sock. But just a new beginning is always a bit scary, right? And this is Bigfoot socks. I call them Bigfoot because my son's feet are really like the feet of a Bigfoot. He has really big and wide feet. And this heel is really big and like nicely hugs his own heel. The last on the list is pearl socks with those little pearls. I already lost interest into them, but I have to finish. The problem is I don't remember how I made my heel. But maybe when I start knitting, I will remember. Okay, so, so I put a plan for myself. I finish these socks and I'll start knitting. I will give one hour a day to these socks so at last I could finish them. And then these two. I had a very nice list, not too long, not too short, but then when I was going through my stash looking for scrap yarn to see what I've got, I found a ball of Angora. This was originally a sweater I bought in a secondhand shop. And you know, our fingers, if you knit a lot, and especially if you use like and most of us use good quality yarns, our fingertips can sense the quality of the yarn. And as soon as I touched it, oh, I fell in love with it. It was so soft and there were no pilling, no matting. So I bought the sweater, unraveled it, then put it into skeins, washed it, let it hang. So all the curly instant instant noodle effect disappears and then wound them back into the balls. I have a bit of, of this yarn to show you how soft and fragile it is. Look, though it's spun and there are two strands. You can see it's made of two strands and they're twisted. Still, it's so fragile. Can you see? To give some sturdiness to it, I bought some super thin yarn. It's Alize, that's a Turkish company and their yarns are really affordable and I would say quite good quality. Some people love them, some people hate. Well, I'm 90% loving them. I don't know why to hate. They all have acrylic, most of them, not all, most of them but that allows you to wash your garments in the washing machine and I think it's a big bonus. So, and this Alize Lana Gold 800 means that this 100 gram ball has 800 meters. It's 50 acrylic, 50 wool. And I added, it's like exact, exact color. So I added one strand and I saw the other day Dior collection and they had this fashion house had like a costume of skirt and sweater in white and it was knitted using this pattern. That's a very simple pattern but it gives a very nice woven, woven effect. So I tried it on on needles 3.5 I washed it, I just soaked it in conditioner. And it's very, you know, this yarn, this sample doesn't have any bones, any skeleton. You know, when you touch yarn, it has its own like shape and form and like kind of bones inside. I don't know how to explain, but this is as flimsy as a, I don't know, as cotton, as loose cotton. I thought I would give maybe two strands of this, but I don't want to take bigger needles because I think if you, if you take bigger needles, the pattern will be bigger and I don't want it to be too big. 
because then I don't think it looks very elegant or nice or aesthetic to my eye. And I chose this yarn because it has a bit of a halo and kind of hides the holes. What I'm doubting is you definitely have to wear something under a t-shirt or tank. And I love wearing just over my body with no other layer in between. So what I thought to give more stability, I will use two strands of this joined with this and I will use the same size needles to see how it looks. It can't be knitted very tightly because the halo won't have space to, to open up to bloom. I will knit this in camera so if you want to use this pattern for your own sweaters I think scarf would look really nice. Mm? I think it would look amazing in fact. So no matter what you what you knit if you want to use this pattern you are welcome and I will make a short video. And now let's go to the most interesting part my acquisitions. Let's go to the most interesting part it's acquisition and purchases and new yarns and look what I've got. What do you think? Which color would you choose? Lava orange, pink, neon yellow, or lime green? Huh? I already see so many designs and so many sweaters using these colors. One color, solid color, striped with different, different sleeves and so many designs that I have to control myself not to start knitting at once. I said, be, be smart, use scrap yarn first and then you get a ticket to use this, these. So this is British, British yarn wool to cone. Shipping to Norway is a headache and though this is an affordable yarn and it's nice and soft, it's British wool. I really like. They don't say how many meters there are in 100 gram ball, but I will write it down. I'll have to check on the internet because the label doesn't say it either. So one cone has 500 grams, half a kilo, half a kilo. So this cane is 200 gram. So I've got 400 of these. And then yellow, green and orange is half a kilo. It's affordable yarn, very nice. Shipping is horrible, taxis are horrible. However, I could avoid at least one part of the like taxis uh, because my friend, I bought it and sent it to my friend uh, who lives in, in London and then she sent it here to me. So as a gift, so I avoided taxis. So then it's not that painful. I also bought two cones of gray because gray is the universal color. You could use it anywhere and add it anywhere. I thought maybe striping with those colors, you know, would look very nice. Would look very nice and stylish. So I, I bought more. And I also bought with speckles. It's off-white, very off-white, like oatmeal white, I would say, with charcoal speckles. I love dots, polka dots, all, all types of dots. So these speckles are like dots for me, so I couldn't resist the temptation. And then I saw the color that is not my color preference. I have one sweater, this color, but it looked so nice on the screen. And I thought if you add deep blue 
and white white to it it would be an amazing combination that sweater that i have it i have embroidered only the part of the sleeves here i'll put a photo so you can see how complementing these colors are like that's the perfect combination and what i liked it's such a thin yarn can i use double even if you use it double it's still thin so that's that's amazing or if you want you can just add one strand of this and one strand of more here and you will have a very light and beautiful garment so these are my treasures that i purchased but i'm not knitting i'm just controlling myself in fact like even those scrap balls i love them because they make your brain work it's very easy to take two skeins and think something but with these little it's like a puzzle you know you play with the balls mix and match and try out and think and that's that's exercise for your brain and i i love designing and i love doing that type of thing uh, and that is all for my February plans. I think I can make as much as I've planned, though I'm already adding some others like this gray woven sweater. Let's see how it goes. I love jazz in knitting. You can improvise infinitely. And that's one of the most beautiful sides of it. There are many beautiful sides like like making things for yourself, designing the way you want, using the quality yarn that you want, not synthetics. It's everything. And also, I love making things that I wear. I love my, my made things. This, they are special. I love them, I wear them, and my family does the same. They are very careful with the knitted garments because it's you knitted, it's so beautiful because they have value, they have love in every stitch, like literally in every stitch. And that's what makes knitting special, very special for me. Okay, enough talking, let's go back to work. Now, as soon as I finish this, I'll go to the shop, buy a ball of Sisu white yarn for another scrap sweater with the big slip stitch pattern that I'm going to show you as well. I hope to see you soon. Thanks for watching and happy knitting!